Thank you for introduction. Yeah, my name is Vladimir. I'm working for Elkomsoft. The company is based in Moscow, Russia. Anybody familiar with Elkomsoft, with our company? No? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks. And, um, okay, we, we are doing computer forensics for about 20 years, and we do decrypt files, break passwords, extract and decrypt data from mobile phones, and for last six or seven years, uh, our main target is the <clears throat> uh, different clouds. We started with Apple Cloud first, and trying to extract as, as much information as possible from there. And during our research, we, we found a lot of quite an interesting, quite interesting things. So here is what my presentation is uh, about. First, what, what data is available in the cloud, how it is being synced across devices. Uh, some of the data, surprisingly, cannot be 100% uh, controlled what, what, what data comes from your device to, to the cloud. Uh, the next big question is how secure is, is the cloud and can you actually trust it and trust, trust your data and where it is stored. Then we'll go some technical, uh, uh, including how the data can be obtained and how it is being decrypted, how and where to get the encryption keys. Um, it's not prob probably not a very good idea to read uh, uh, the program code at the screens, but uh, uh, everything will be available in the presentation itself, uh, so, so, so you'll be able to read that later. And as a conclusion, what, what are the other issues with the data stored in the cloud, especially the messages uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about today? Uh, what are the risks? Uh, what are the profits? Uh, if you are working for law enforcement or, or, or if you are a hacker. And uh, there are still some questions we don't know uh, exact answers to. So, what is in the cloud? Um, uh, Apple and Google use different approaches in their ecosystems and with, with their clouds. Google, from the very beginning uh, of Android, uh, used the uh, synchronization mechanism to exchange uh, data between the devices and the cloud storage. And Apple selected the different approach uh, when, when Apple Cloud just appeared, <coughs> uh, iCloud. Uh, they were, uh, it, it was mainly used for iCloud backups and nothing else. Uh, still, uh, right, right, right now, after six or so years after int introduction of um, Apple iCloud, there is quite a lot of data stored there. Starting from you, know, from from your contacts and uh, device backups and photos and videos that might be included in iCloud backups, but also uh, available through sync mechanisms. Uh, since iOS 11 re released over a year ago, health data can be also synced with the cloud, and passwords with iCloud keychain, not just passwords, but some some other uh, very sensitive and private data as well. And uh, now messages. <clears throat> there is a brief history of changes uh, about the Apple iCloud uh, since uh, 2011, when iCloud uh, has been ever introduced. After about half of the year, maybe a little bit more, we realized how to download iCloud backups uh, from the cloud, and it was really a, a very good uh, profit for uh, many people uh, to, to, to understand how their backups are stored, and we realized that there are as many as three uh, device backups for every for every device, and the backups are incremental, and they're being created automatically every day, every every 24 hours when the device is connected to Wi-Fi, connected to the power source, and the screen is locked, and then. Uh, Apple started to add more and more catch categories of data to, to the cloud. In 2013, iCloud Keychain was introduced, and uh, since then uh, it had uh, many improvements, and it is uh, extremely convenient to use, especially if you are living in Apple ecosystem and have more than one device. Uh, for example, iPhone, iPad, uh, Mac, and, and whatever. Unfortunately, I, I, iCloud Keychain is not being synced with uh, videos, probably uh, due to security reasons. Um, in 2014, Apple added two-step verification. 
Uh, uh, but at, at that time, it was limited only to some specific iCloud features, but not to uh, iCloud backups. And that was really a bad idea. And uh, about a year later, the Celebgate has happened. You probably remember that when the private images of uh, over 100 celebrities were leaked. The hackers used phishing to get the uh, iCloud passwords, and since there were no uh, second factor, it was quite easy to extract everything from the cloud. And since iCloud backups are stored, uh, created by, def by default in the cloud, everything was there. Only after that, Apple added the two-step verification to iCloud backups too. Um, also, we realized how to use uh, not just passwords, not just Apple ID and password, but the uh, authentication token instead. Authentication token, you, you should be familiar with it. It's a uh, binary bunch of data saved on your device. That, that could be a Windows or Mac computer or the actual iOS device. Uh, uh, it, it is being created actually on the server, on Apple server, uh, after you authenticate and after you pass that uh, to step verification or to factor authentication. And uh, using the authentication token is actually more convenient and, uh, well, from, from many points it's better uh, compared to using just password. Uh, because uh, with the two-factor authentication, you also need to have the second factor to, to access the uh, iCloud. And with token, uh, you, don't, you, you don't need to have the second factor at all. And the token is, is everything you need to, to access the iCloud. Well, most of the data in the iCloud. Uh, Apple has made changes in one or other direction uh, several times with the releases of different iOS versions. They also moved the iCloud backups from, from one storage to another and changed the time to leave of authentication tokens. When, when we first um, uh, realized how to extract them and how to use them to download the iCloud data, uh, they were unlimited in, in time to use. So. You were able, and until of course the password has been changed, uh, you were able to use the authentication token uh, even after half of the year uh, to, to, to access all the iCloud data. Then in some, some versions, I think, uh, yeah, in iOS 8, the time to leave of authentication token uh, has been limited to only 24 or 48 hours. And uh, later when iCloud backups have been moved to the uh, the storage at iCloud Drive. Uh, the, uh, also, we uh, that was possible to use the authentication token again for unlimited time. Uh, and so, right now, the time to leave of authentication token is even more limited. And usually, they can be used only during one hour uh, after they have been created. So they they being refreshed uh, by the system. Uh, later, Apple also introduced the two-factor authentication, which is much better and uh, much more secure than two-step verification. And uh, this time, when someone tries to log on with Apple ID and password, even before entering the second factor, uh, there is a notification being sent to all the devices connected to the same account. And only if the if the person who holds one of the uh, devices confirm that, yes, I approve the access to the, the account, uh, only after that, the second factor, uh, the six-digit code, is, is shown, and it is mandatory to, to enter the account. And since then, with, uh, with uh, iOS 11, Apple really aggressively pushed that two-factor authentication. When you set up the uh, new device now, uh, there is even no, no such term as a two-factor authentication is shown on the screen. You just have to enter your uh, phone number, it is, uh, and it is automatically enrolled on the account. And it is really a good idea, because the device without two-factor authentication is, is not secure at all. Uh, messages uh, in iCloud appeared. Uh, Apple actually promised to release it with... Um, uh, iOS version 11, and we, but we had to wait for, for about half of the year. Uh, it was there in first beta versions of uh, iOS 11.0. 
in the first three or four beta versions, then removed, and then again appeared in uh, beta versions of 11.3, but it came into release only in iOS 11.4. And during the beta testing, there were actually a lot of bugs found there, uh, especially about syncing the messages across the devices. Uh, what the uh, messaging syncing is for, you may ask, uh, because you, you can just use the iMessage on all your Apple devices and that's it. They will come to all the devices and you can answer f through all of them. Uh, but the idea is uh, to, to have it synced uh, faster and more convenient and also the synchronization mechanism also includes the SMS messages. They're also being uploaded to the cloud and synced to other devices connected to the account. And with iOS 12, uh, there is an, another uh, portion of, of data, and it is really huge, uh, uploaded to the cloud and synced there. Uh, that's a screen time feature. That's actually statistics. Um, uh, what applications have you run um, uh, when you stopped by category, by, uh, by particular application? Uh, before, uh, that feature has been introduced. Actually, the data was already there on the device and stored in a couple of databases and in SQLite data format, but it was extremely hard to extract it from there, only with the physical acquisition, because that data was not presented in Sorry. Uh, in iTunes backups. And physical acquisition is only possible if, if the system is compatible with the jailbreak. At this time, jailbreak is uh, available only for versions up to 11.3.1, uh, not for iOS 12. So there, are some, there, there was some news about jailbreaking uh, iOS 11 as well. But still, that's a uh, really good source of data, especially if you're working for law enforcement, the screen time. That's uh, application usage. Uh, also this year, earlier this year, in 2018, Apple has made some, some, some other moves um, and some uh, improvements. So the one I already mentioned, that's about the authentication token. Another thing is that uh, to factor out authentication is now mandatory to enable some features. You won't be able to sync messages with iCloud without 2FA. And same for screen time. So that, that, that feature is uh, considered to be uh, really important uh, because of keep, uh, keeping the very private data and the iCloud keychain as well. Uh, we also uh, apply out this, this idea. And there are stricter token policies now. That's not only about the uh, time to leave of the tokens. The tokens are now generated a different way and they're using so-called, that's an Apple t term, not, not ours, any set data uh, that is being refreshed every several minutes, and so the tokens we are now able to extract from live Windows or Mac system or even from the uh, device, they cannot be used without that data, and uh, it doesn't work that way that you just copy the authentication token uh, along with the uh, NSA data. That won't work. The NSA data is somehow pinned to the hardware, uh, we are now for, for about uh, several months trying to research and understand how it works, how the NSA data is generated, but the code inside iOS and inside macOS is really hardly obfuscated and there is a lot of system functions involved. And so for now, we can only use the authentication token on, on exactly the same computer where, where this token has been generated. I'm, I'm sure we'll resolve that one day, allowing to move the token to another computer with some, some extra data or to generate any set data ourselves. But that's not really easy. Uh, well, to understand what, what kind of data is synced between your devices and the cloud, uh, there is no single page on Apple website that describes everything, uh, what categories are synced. The first thing to check is just your iPhone or iPad device settings and go to the cloud and under the name of your account you'll see there are a lot of uh, checkboxes what you're going to sync. Most of them are enabled by default and that, that list is that uh, looks comprehensive but actually it, it, it's not 
it's not very accurate. For example, we cannot find a call log syncing here, but call logs, uh, call logs are being synced. And we have found that about two years ago. And some users of Apple devices also monetized. Uh, for example, when connecting two different devices of, of you and, and your wife, uh, to the same iCloud account just for convenience, they have found that once they uh, receive or make the, the phone call, the same record appears on the other device as well. So we started to investigate and yes, and we, we have found that call logs are being synced and there is absolutely no way to disable that, that feature until you completely disable the iCloud drive. And if you do that, uh, a lot of applications will stop working. Well, not completely, but a lot of features will be disabled and because they're iCloud related. And it, it's also not clear what is hidden under the iCloud drive because that's not just a storage and that's uh, like a service. It is a storage too, but the service is, is more important. And uh, most modern applications from game to business ones are using the iCloud drive intensively, using the cloud kit available from Apple and seeing the data from there. So this is one thing. And also uh, messages um, um, uh, in iCloud, I should know that they do require the iCloud key chain to be enabled. Uh, it is possible technically well, for, uh, in the options to leave the iCloud keychain disabled, but enable the syncing of messages, just, just moving the checkbox. But the, it's not going to work. You will see the options in, in that positions, but message uh, will be synced with the cloud. Uh, because there are technical reasons for that, and I'll uh, explain them a bit later. Another source to, to understand what data is being synced with the cloud is, of course, the iCloud.com website. But it, it uses a web-based approach just to mostly to, to access your documents stored there, maybe contacts and notes. And so there is actually not much. There is less than a half of available data categories there. And uh, uh, you can only see how much space in the iCloud, in, on the iCloud drive is occupied by uh, by your data, and you'll see that some storages uh, belong to iCloud backups, and also if you use the family sharing, the uh, space occupied by other device backups, and so on. But you won't be able to get your data from there, uh, so you, you, know, you only see a very limited list of categories. The other extremely good source is the website privacy.apple.com. It first appeared and has been seriously improved about a half a year ago when a new European GDPR law uh, has been uh, uh, well activated and it first appeared in limited set of countries, uh, mostly in Europe, maybe about 20 uh, countries or so. About two months ago that website became available also in the United States and Canada and two weeks ago, it, it is now also available in Russia and in about 10 different countries. I'm not sure about Emirates, but and also I'm not sure about China. Uh, Apple hasn't advertised or introduced those, and there is no list of countries available where this service actually works. Well, what can you do? You can log into the account, pass that to FA as usual, and request all the data stored at Apple that that is connected to your iCloud account. That includes that doesn't include uh, iCloud device backups for some reason we don't know, probably because of the size. But it does include most of the data synced between uh, between the, all of your devices and the iCloud storage. And there are also some records that are available only at Apple, not available in the iCloud actually, uh, according to your activity in the retail store and your Apple Care support requests and, and so on. The most interesting data is actually hidden uh, under the other data category. It, it's mostly about the iCloud. Uh, also, uh, after you send that request, you have to wait for uh, exactly one week till the data will be delivered to you. 
Apple says that it is being made for security reasons and they use that week to verify what that uh, you're the legal owner of uh, that data. How they do that? Actually, no idea. Uh, you won't find messages here. Uh, you won't find uh, health data in most cases. And of course, you won't get the uh, iCloud keychain also for a good reason, because of the additional encryption. And last but not least, uh, it's an extremely useful document on the Apple website describing how the uh, law enforcement can send requests to Apple and what data can they can they obtain, uh, obtain legally. Uh, there is also no exact and full list there, but it mentions some things also including the call log. Uh, including also some metadata about calls you have made using the um, uh, FaceTime and some, some, some extra data as well. So by combining uh, all those four sources and in, including also uh, our own research, we have compiled like a list of the data that is synced to the, to the cloud. Uh, pay attention to the last item, that's a file world 2 recovery token. Uh, by default, if you, when you encrypt your drive on your Mac computer until you disable the option, the recovery token or recovery key, uh, which is not the 100% uh, correct term, is also being uploaded to the cloud and it can be extracted from there. Uh, not, not the standard way, but on, only using the special software. And using that token, you can actually decrypt the file vault uh, partition without the knowledge of the actual password. All you need is access to the cloud account. And that kind of data is available by uh, Apple ID and password and the second factor or the authentication token again. Let's move to iCloud security. There is a lot of data on the Apple website, on third party sites, in our company blog, how the data is secured. The, the main article in the Apple knowledge base is called um, iCloud security, I think. And it just described that uh, we're using the uh, 128 FIS encryption, and the keys are stored in the strong way, and some, but some categories, that's a kind of exclusion. There is a special note about them that the iCloud keychain used 256-bit uh, encryption uh, with the same algorithm. And the sum of the categories, including the messages, screen time, home, health, and a couple of others, use so-called uh, end-to-end encryption. That's not actually the correct term either, because end-to-end, -end, it, it's usually being used for messaging when only the uh, appropriate device can, uh, can decrypt the data that is being transferred. And now we're speaking about the cloud. What is end-to-end -end, uh, when, we, when we're speaking about the cloud and the device? Uh, the thing is that uh, now the data is, of course, is encrypted. Yes, exactly as Apple says, with uh, 256 key. Uh, uh, but there is one more thing. Uh, you have to be so-called trusted to enter that very specific and very encrypted and secured zone. Uh, the device uh, should be enrolled into the so-called um, uh, circle of trust. And only being there, it can access the iCloud keychain, the screen time data, the health data, and, and so on. Yes, here is a note about the uh, iCloud, another note about iCloud data protection and about uh, end to end encryption. It doesn't look really clear, it just says that you have to provide the uh, device passcode, not, not obvious which one, and does it really matter which one of the passcodes you, you use? Um, and so, and of course, there are no te ne technical details there, but in general, it is more or less correct. Uh, uh, so, uh, just a bit of summary on the cloud security. Uh, to, to access any data in the cloud, you need to have the Apple ID and password. There is no other way, or uh, there, there, there could be the second factor applied to the account, and with the second factor, 
uh, only with a two, uh, two, two factor authentication. Uh, you can enable the iCloud messages, screen time, and some other thing, things. Yes, all the data is encrypted, but the encryption keys are stored along with the data, not physically on the same server. They're stored in the different storages. Most of the iCloud data is stored in on third party uh, storages like uh, Amazon, uh, you know, Google, and uh, Microsoft, and TAT, and so on. By, but the encryption keys uh, all belong to Apple and stored at their facilities some, somewhere in Cupertino. Uh, with iCloud Keychain, as I said, there is something very specific. Uh, that's a more secure data, and it has to be protected better, and yeah, it really is. Uh, to access the iCloud Keychain, you have to be in the trusted circle. And also, there is a special service uh, that are called uh, CKKS, Cloud Key Keychain Sync. It's not exactly the Cloud Keychain itself. That's a, a kind of different uh, service that that keeps even more secure keys than the Cloud Keychain itself. The keys, encryption keys for messages, for probably for screen time because we won't be able to to explore it yet. And those keys stored in the uh, CKKS are encrypted with the key stored in the iCloud keychain. And to access the keychain, iCloud keychain itself, you also need to to realize where the encryption uh, uh, encryption keys are. And to get and to unwrap those encryption keys, you have to supply the passcode of uh, one of the enrolled devices. That more secure data, including the keychain and um, and messages that are not provided to law enforcement uh, and are also not available by GDPR requests imply because Apple really don't have access to that data until, of course, they build some kind of backdoor not known to us, but from what we know and what we from what we have explored, the architecture of that system and supply doesn't allow to the, the backdoor to built in. Uh, as I said, the tokens thing have been also improved recently. The lifespan is much shorter than before. They, they can be used only on the same computer where they have been generated, and that's extremely good idea. And also connected to the hardware ID with specific NSAID data. And with uh, uh, iOS 11.2, that was a big surprise to us from Apple because we're doing and selling the software to download iCloud backups that uh, they stopped working for that combination. And we have found that uh, simply uh, Apple ID and passwords are not enough to download iCloud backups for that uh, that version of iOS with the two-factor authentication and also and it said data is now being used. We are now doing our best to understand how it is generated and how to use uh, to access uh, an iCloud backups. Uh, can it be further improved the authentication tokens to to get everything from the cloud? Yes, there is another kind of tokens you know, they called continuation token, and I would say that they are much stronger than uh, usual old style tokens. Uh, they uh, uh, they can be theoretically used to access everything without uh, without any extra data, like even even the passcode of the trusted device. So with that continuation token, even, uh, once we realize how to use it, we'll be able to download absolutely everything from the iCloud that belongs to the particular Apple ID with no extra data. And again, all the codes related to the uh, most secure parts of the iCloud, they're very hardly obfuscated. There are hundreds of, uh, no, not the hundreds, uh, thousands of system functions being being used, and that's uh, very hard to understand uh, the code. Uh, there is actually more. There are, there are also some other security measures uh, made by Apple. For example, when they detect that from single IP address, uh, different iCloud accounts are being accessed, they immediately block the uh, uh, access to that Apple ID, they reset the password and send notification to the account owner um, that his account has been probably misused and you will have to reset your password. 
Uh, about the storage, I mentioned that the data is stored at uh, mostly at Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. It's uh, in China. All the data is stored on their own facilities, also located in in China. About Russia, it, it's actually not clear because Russia actually has the law similar to the Chinese one that all personal data have to be stored only uh, only in Russia, and because of that. Uh, a couple of years ago, LinkedIn, owned by Microsoft, refused to move the data of Russian LinkedIn users to uh, to Russia, and it, it, it's now blocked. But still, um, uh, data that belong to iCloud so of Russian users, they're still um, uh, usually in the either in the United States or in Europe. Uh, the good thing about that is that. Um, even the owner of the data centers where the data, the cloud data is stored, yeah, it won't be able to get anything from that because um, the encryption keys are actually stored only at Apple, as I said. Uh, to factor authentication is a must, and I, I really hope that one day it will be mandatory for all Apple ID account. It, it simply Probably the market is not 100% ready for that, and there is still a lot of uh, room for improvement there. Uh, and now it works uh, with uh, uh, trusted devices, and if you don't have the trusted device, you can use just the SIM card. For example, if you're investigating the phone that is locked, and there is no passcode, and it can be broken, to access the iCloud account, you can just pull the SIM card out, insert it into the other phone, receive the second factor, and get complete access to the, uh, to the account. Okay, let's go to the iCloud messages. I have described in general, just in two words, that the data uh, in, in uh, data stored in messages in iCloud is uh, protected much stronger than most of the other data. I would say about the same way as the iCloud keychain. Actually, there is a, like a chain of encryption. The data is stored on the iCloud drive, the message data, I mean, and also the message attachments. Uh, they are encrypted with the keys uh, stored in CKKS storage. The keys um, to decrypt the CKKS are stored in the iCloud keychain, and to get access to iCloud keychain, you need to enter into the trusted circle, and uh, for that, you will have to provide uh, the passcode of one of the trusted devices. Uh, uh, for two-factor authentication is always required to enable that feature. And um, uh, when, uh, by the way, when, when we're using access to the uh, cloud using uh, login and password to access uh, the things like the cloud keychain, uh, we don't have to supply to factor uh, the second factor if we, if we are doing on on the same computer because that computer is already considered to be trusted. That makes the things a, a little bit simpler. Also, uh, it's really important to know that once you enable the syncing of messages to the iCloud, uh, from that point, the messages and also the attachments, they will not be included anymore into the iCloud backups, iCloud backups of the complete device. So everything is, becomes uh, ju just syncing. Uh, the first target and the first thing we need to do is to access the iCloud keychain. Uh, we did that maybe a year ago or so. We don't, we don't actually add our device or add our software to the trusted circle because that's first, it is hard and it's not, of course, it, it, it's not documented. And the second problem is that once uh, any device is added to the trusted circle, all the other devices uh, immediately receive the uh, push notification uh, on, on that and so the account owner will know. And speaking of the people working for law enforcement, that's absolutely not possible. Once they need to, quite often they need to monitor some account and get the data silently without the knowledge of the owners. So we'll have to supply the uh, the passcode of the device, and the good thing is that we we can get information how long the passcode is. 
Uh, if uh, we're, uh, we're talking about the iOS device, uh, but not for uh, Mac computers, unfortunately. There is also a limit. Uh, we cannot make the brute force attack there. The account will be locked. Uh, not the complete account. The iCloud keychain will be locked and becomes unavailable after 10 un uh, unsuccessful attempts. The, it's uh, also good news that we do know the uh, current counter and we know how many incorrect attempts have been already made. Uh, uh, the syncing of the um, trusted devices, it, it's actually not really clear. Sometimes the older devices that were connected some time ago to the same cloud uh, accounts, they still work and they still can be used to access the uh, uh, same account, probably by hardware ID or I don't know how. Also, after you change the passcode on the device, uh, new passcode start working immediately, but sometimes for some period of time, the old passcode also still work. Uh, here is the, the screenshot of uh, extracted uh, iCloud keychain. In the documentation on the iCloud and the iCloud keychain, Apple says that the only thing with iCloud only passwords and nothing else are passwords and credit card data. Uh, that is not true. Not only passwords are being synced, but also a lot of the authentication tokens, mostly for um, social media, for messengers, and so on. Uh, the password itself uh, is not saved in the cloud account, but the authentication token is. And using that token, exactly the same as with uh, Apple iCloud, you can get that token for fa Facebook, for example, for the iCloud keychain, and that way access everything that belongs to that keychain account. Oh, now let, let's go technical. I, I won't stop for too long on every slide that describes the technical operations, how to extract and how to decrypt the data in messages. You'll get the complete presentation and uh, um, now we'll be able to, to understand everything in details. All the data uh, that belong to our messages, they also store it in the, uh, on the iCloud drive, um, well, or in the iCloud in general. Uh, they're, they're split it across uh, three different, uh, different zones. One zone belong uh, to message data, to messages themselves, only the text. The other data is uh, belong to chats. The chats are just like, well, group chats, the messages when uh, there are more than two persons involved. And there is a third zone uh, that belongs to attachments. What are attachments to messages? Every time when I send a uh, picture or video or your location or anything else, uh, actually, more than one message is, is being created in the iCloud, the message itself, and also the attachment. And actually, the same happens when you um, then you make the some screen effect uh, uh, over the iMessage. It, it's also being stored uh, as a separate file as an attachment. And probably the most interesting thing is that when you share the uh, HTTP link with someone, are using the iMessage, uh, iMessage itself generate the preview of, of that website. And that preview, it's usually just a, like a screenshot from the front page of that site. And that, that screenshot is, is saved as a picture and it is stored in the attachment folder on your local uh, phone. And it also, uh, if the message syncing is enabled, it is also being uploaded to the cloud. For some websites, uh, the complete, um, act the actual uh, images are being saved. For example, just share the link to the image or the link to the video, uh, but not uh, only the the link itself is being transferred, but iCloud now has the uh, file um, that file itself. Uh, that is really good news for law enforcement because the link at the time of investigating the phone uh, might be not available anymore, but the picture will be saved. Uh, I'm not sure can you can you recognize everything. That that's like a, a general structure how we download uh, messages, chats, and attachments. And for all of those three categories, we also need to get the encryption keys, and they're all different. 
so there are different containers. The names are not published. We spend a lot of time to understand what are the name of the containers, what are the names of the zones. Uh, we actually, we use sniffing for that, like a man the middle attack, and the certificates using for iCloud access, they pinned uh, to the device, so we had to use the uh, jailbroken device and also full the uh, certificate pinning system. So most of the message, uh, most of the text uh, information is accessible in the container that is called, well, obvious name, com.table messages cloud, and there is also the bundle ID that is also required to extract that information called com.apple.image image nt. Uh, there are three zones, uh, of the, and that's a kind of internal name, uh, from, from Apple called, called manatee. And there are three manatee zones, as I said, for messages, for chats, and for, for attachments. And so with the, with the messages, it's, it works about the same as with all other data we worked before. The um, iCloud backups, the iCloud data, the files stored on the iCloud drive, uh, the synced data categories like notes, contacts, and so on. All the data is split into parts called chunks. That is being done for two reasons. The one reason is security. You will not be able to get the encryption key used to encrypt one chunk to, to, to decrypt the other one. And the second reason is to, to save some space because a lot of data is being duplicated and by splitting into chunks, uh, there is, seems to be a smart algorithm at Apple implemented to, to save only unique portions of data to prevent duplication. Uh, what is the role of the iCloud keychain there? The, the, uh, some of the chunks are encrypted with the uh, uh, with the key stored in the, in the security keychain container and with the uh, security diamond, uh, uh, the diamond bundle. And, uh, uh, there is a multi-layer encryption there and the key, uh, the keys itself are, the, they're also stored not in the play text, uh, but, uh, uh, also wrapped and encrypted with the other keys. And uh, below is a screenshot of the data we have extracted from the iCloud keychain, not not in the form they're available on the phone itself, but containing the encryption keys for different data categories and different zones and, and containers. Uh, downloading messages itself, the text is is more or less easy. That that's not exactly the text. That's uh, uh, like an XML data, something like that. There are all the fields. That's a metadata. That includes the subject. Surprisingly, the iMessage uh, may contain subject if you enable that option, but most people don't use it. And several, several timestamps, the time when the message has been sent. The second timestamp is when the message has been delivered. And the third timestamp that is not always available, but sometimes when the message has been uh, really uh, read. And of course, both the contacts, the contacts of the sender and the contacts of the receiver. And there is actually more we can, we can use in the, for example, in investigation. All those fields are encrypted the same way and the same algorithm. And actually, we don't know the, the actual meaning of, of some fields, but still, if we can decrypt them, well, why not? And so we're decrypting everything we, we receive from the, from the cloud. Uh, to receive the message itself, that that's uh, well more or less easy and about the same as for uh, other cloud data. We just need to make a proper request to the uh, uh, to the proper zone. And for messages, it is message manatee zone. And here is the request and um, how it is formed and uh, uh, what we what we can actually get. Um, for messages, we also get uh, many of the uh, other things. Uh, as I said, many meaning of some of them is, is actually not known. But some of them, like uh, GUID, is a unique identifier of the message that allows further uh, connect that message to to its attachments. So for example, once we download attachments, they also have that ID, and that ID is ob obviously the same for the messages with with uh, attachments. And also there is a message type describing whether it is a, uh, some screen effect or what kind of attachment it is there. 
Um, well, for chats, uh, about the same, but uh, same same requests, uh, just a different zone, and the request itself with um, with also the same fields. For chats, we receive a bit more data. Here are the fields that are obtained by the request to to chats, and again, some of them are not known, and everything everything is still encrypted. Uh, retrieving attachments is a little bit harder. Also, everything works at the top of the um, cloud kit protocol. And with the chunks, uh, compared to messages, uh, message bodies, so the texts and chats and so on, uh, here the data is also split at, uh, using the chunks, like with a drive or like with a uh, with the data stored in iCloud backups, because data transferred as attachments can be huge, and there is no way to feed them into the single message. It, it simply won't work uh, very uh, reliable. First, we get the metadata uh, of the attachments, and there is quite a lot. There is a file name, file time, time timestamp, and even the MD5 hash that, that can be uh, used, so, for example, again, in the investigations, in the surveillance, or whatever, and to verify that the file is exactly the same as, for example, in the, in the other case. And it's, there are also some flags, for example, is it a, a sticker sent by, uh, a message. Uh, well, again, now we, we go to the third zone. We, we already explored two. The one zone belonged, that belonged to message texts, uh, the other one to, uh, to chats, group chats, and the third zone, uh, called manit, um, attachment manatee zone, uh, that, uh, actually, uh, contain actual con uh, contents of the message attachments. Uh, here the data is larger, it is split uh, using the chunks, uh, the every, every attachment may contain several, uh, several blobs, uh, binary large objects, uh, that, uh, for example, uh, happens for uh, live photos and, and for videos and, and so on. And the main, the main uh, field we, we need to explore is the CM, because it, it contains the uh, data that is mandatory for further encryption of the data that comes uh, uh, using, using chunks. So first we request to, to uh, download chunks uh, themselves, and so receiving the, you know, the list of chunks and then download them one by one. And there is uh, one more interesting type of, of chunks uh, that has been uh, introduced. Uh, when, uh, when syncing the messages to the cloud, uh, it looks the same as usual data chunk, but it is called fort chunk, and that fort chunk contains the encryption keys for every particular data chunk. So we, we have to, of course, we have to download both. We have to download the file chunks and corresponding fort chunks. Uh, here is the comparison of the of the different chunks. Uh, the, the, at the top one is the content chunks for the attachments, the binary data. Uh, the, the second one is the four chunk that contains the encryption key. And just to compare the, how the chunk look like uh, for the iCloud backups and for files stored on the iCloud drive. So they're, they're, they're very similar, but with, uh, with iCloud data, usual on cloud data that is not, not that secured, the encryption key is uh, right in the chunk. So it's much easier. Detecting uh, the fourth chunk is, is not that hard. Uh, every chunk has a signature. We just verified it. We found it the experimental way and sniffing a lot of data. And once we found uh, the chunk, the fourth chunk that contains the encryption key, we just uh, uh, unroll that encryption key and save it along with the, with the data itself for further encryption. We'll have to, to, to parse it. There are several, uh, several info arrays with the different, different data. And uh, we uh, we can also detect, of course, uh, uh, the actual content uh, chunks that encrypt that contain the actual data of the messages. And uh, then then we decrypt the data chunks using the encryption keys that were found in in the uh, four chunks. And the last step is just compile uh, all those chunks using the maps uh, the map uh, kind of map that is also being. 
uh, available using the other requests, uh, compile those chunks into a, into a file. And the final step is the verify the integrity using the, the MD5 because we, with the metadata, we also obtain the, uh, the hash sum of the file. I'll probably skip all the steps. That's actually the repeat of what I have described, but just the different, different way, step by step. Accessing the, uh, the keychain is the first thing we need to access because we need to get the keys from there. And the keys are being used to, to decrypt the other keys that are stored in, uh, in the other, um, a cloud ARS CKKS, and from the CKKS, once we uh, unwrap the case, we'll be able to download the actual data. Okay. All the standard algorithms are being used, uh, actually, uh, but a couple of times we also notice some some difference. Uh, for example. I uh, want able for maybe for about a couple of weeks to decrypt the data, although we knew what algorithm is being used and it was really standard, but the, the only difference was with the initialization vector. It wasn't as described as um, in the specification of the algorithms. Uh, so the te technical part, you will, you'll be able to go through it uh, uh, carefully after that. There are still some 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 some, some questions. Uh, the f the first and probably the most important one: How strong is the implementation of the iCloud uh, iMessage syncing? Uh, yes, it is really strong. And from from the best we know, neither Apple nor law enforcement uh, can access your messages. They will have to access your iCloud keychain first. And the passcode of uh, that is required to enter into the trusted circle. It's not saved anywhere. You, you can only send a new request to add a new device to that, to that circle. And for that, you'll have to apply the passcode of one of the devices that are already there. But if we, if, if we need, or if the law enforcement need to, to get the messages from the cloud, uh, they still can do that, at least theoretically, but there are too many uh, prerequisites. Uh, they will need the Apple ID and password. They will also need the second factor that is actually simple uh, from from SMS or from the trusted device uh, that is in many cases available. And e even if there is no SIM card, it is possible like, well, duplicate the existing card and get it from the operator. And they will need the passcode of the trusted device. That is actually the uh, the hardest the hardest part. Uh, can someone use the access to the iCloud for real-time surveillance uh, uh, using the messages? Uh, yes and no. Uh, actually, uh, message syncing is still, uh, even after testing, even after uh, half a year delay, it still doesn't work very reliable. And uh, sometimes we see the message being synced across devices in just several minutes. Sometimes we had to wait two or three days. I don't know why. Maybe that's a problem with iCloud keychain, maybe the, uh, not the network definitely, because we always use the yeah, uh, uh, broadband uh, network. Uh, uh, so until message uh, messaging syncing uh, will be fixed, there is no way to use that for, for real time. It's much easier to write like, well, your, your own iMessage client and to, to receive all the messages that go through the cloud. You just will not get the SMS messages because they, they go the different way. And is it possible, at least theoretically, to access uh, the messages without the password and without the second factor? Yes. As I said, with the continuation token, uh, it's still a, lo a lot of work ahead, but uh, once it is completed, uh, not, nothing else uh, will be needed. Only the authentication token, the continuation token extracted from one of the uh, computers that I enrolled uh, to, to the account. Uh, I have covered most 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 of the things. Um, uh, there are uh, just a couple of other um, uh, things left. Uh, and the main probably you might ask, what is the risk, and uh, is it possible to uh, to avoid it? Uh, because two-factor authentication is already there. You will be able to use the message syncing uh, without it. What else can you do? Well, the main thing is that 
to take necessary security measures to protect your, all of your devices that are already in the trusted circle and keep as less devices as possible, probably even single one for the authentication. So that will be a key to, to everything. And what is the profit to save to law enforcement to get the messages? Uh, usually they were downloading or obtaining from Apple the iCloud backups and everything was there. But if iMessage syncing is enabled, the messages are not there, not in backups, and they be, can be also only extracted directly from the, uh, from the cloud. And apart from texts, uh, uh, the attachments um, are actually extremely important because most of the, I would say 99% of images and videos, they contain the exif data, and this exif data usually include the exact location where that picture uh, has been made. And also link previews, as I said, when I, when I share the link across the message, the preview is being generated, and even if that website is down or not available anymore or completely removed, the picture the, the, of, of that website or uh, even the video from that site will be, will be still available in the cloud. That's it. Thank you very much.